You know, look at MKLA. Not one of the names that would turn around and say, I'm dying to trade tomorrow. But, again, beggars can't be choosers. And at least we see a range here. They got rejected two days in a row. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Uh, pardon the dim lighting. My, I, I have such a headache right now. I had to dim the lights. I can't look at these damn screens anymore. It's only Wednesday, right? It's only Wednesday. Anyway, uh, good action today. But the, again, the same disappointing thing that we've been talking about for months. You know, you have Beta giving you one good day, and yesterday was very aggressive with Tesla, with Netflix, with Nvidia, and everything in between, right? It was a very, very solid session. Everything was good. And now we were looking for day two, right? We want the follow through. Come on, show us that you can live with prosperity. Yesterday, uh, last night, you had Google reporting great numbers. You had Amazon. Uh, despite Bezos stepping down as CEO, you know, really good numbers, pre-market, you know, they were up 40, 50, whatever it was. It wasn't anything significant, but the point was we were waiting for kind of a second leg in the mega cap beta community. And just like every other time now for the last two, three months, there's value in other places and beta just kind of dies. And it just, it, it really is one of the, you know, greatest uh, enigmas that you know, that I've seen in a long time. They just can't muster a second, third day move. So, for example, uh, we talked about Tesla yesterday, right? We talked about Tesla. Uh, the first thing we talked about this morning, 881, 882 needs to build, right? You know, Tesla came nowhere near it. You know, 881, 882 is yesterday's highs, came nowhere near it. Uh, and sold off. The only good thing about what I, what I liked about Tesla's session today was if you can uh, figure out a positive that, you know, the fact that it didn't confirm yesterday's price action, it still held this channel that it broke out yesterday. Okay, that's cool, right? Amazon, good quarter, uh, sold off. Apple came very, very close, really, really close, like maybe a day away from kind of reclaiming the top of this channel. And the stock sold off as well. Netflix could have, you know, could have done it. You know, Netflix just needed to really come above this channel here and start reclaiming to go back towards its earnings high. And again, failed as well. Even though Nvidia, and again, Nvidia was a really aggressive move today. Nvidia could have really cleared out this channel today uh, ahead of its uh, earnings run for next week, and it failed that as well. Uh, Roku, you know. Roku had a big, big initial move. And again, we'll get to the individual pivots in a second. But the problem was I couldn't catch that move early in, in Roku. It went up like $5 and it felt like it went up on $5, like on 500 shares. You couldn't get anything off on this thing. So very, very, very disappointing. I think that's the best way of saying it. Very, very disappointing session uh, for the mega cap names. But if you look at the other value in the market, it continues to be the same broken record. Beta, right? Beta disappoints. Again, I was watching, we talked about uh, Zoom for yesterday. If it could just reclaim 400, 405, it never even came close, right? Never came close. Had such a good promising, um, you know, promising value for today's session. Just needed a day two in Tesla, needed a day two in Netflix and Zoom and everything else. And got absolutely nothing. So again, beta is what it is. When it when it comes and there's volume and there's option flow, those are the days you have to get very very aggressive in those names. And when there's not, and they're sitting in their you know their respective channels doing absolutely nothing, you have to leave those days alone. And especially if you're trading on the option side, and we kind of went over this uh, pretty much in nausea today. In the webinar, a lot of you guys are option traders. Okay, you don't have the luxury of having the same mindset as an equity trader. An equity trader can take the 50 cents, can take the dollar, can take the dollar and a half, can take the 40 cents, can take the 80 cents. For all you guys who are trading on the option side, you need big measured potential. You need those $20 measured moves in Tesla. You need those 
you know, 20, 30, $40 moves in Amazon. You need those $10 moves in the video uh, and Netflix and Facebook and Apple to, maybe not Apple, uh, to get those really big bang for your bucks. You can't afford to trade in a session that gives you a range that something trades in a $2 range. There's no way you can make money buying premium. Selling premium is a whole different story, but buying premium, you're out of luck. So you really have to be discipline you oh you know you really have to be conscious of the idea that maybe every single day is not going to be for you you know and you have to pick and choose your spots maybe trade one or two or three days throughout the week maybe give yourself an opportunity that when you see maybe an 885 break on tesla 900 break on tesla that's when you want to you know really get aggressive on a measure potential channel. So not every trader is built the same, not every single type of trader is built the same. And as we see all the time, not every single day is built the same. Yesterday, ridiculous amounts of measure potential. Today was everything else an exception for beta. So if you look at uh, the technical kind of view of the markets, again, you're not really seeing anything that's going to dictate what kind of a session is going to be played out for tomorrow. We have no idea. But when I'm doing the watch list tonight and I'm looking at the setups tonight and I said, wow, beta looks like crap. Not to sell beta, but there's nothing for beta that you really want to buy for tomorrow. And if you look at the watch list, today, and again, if you do your research tonight and you go through a lot of charts, you'll turn around and say, well, Apple looks like crap. Not to sell it, but it looks like crap. Facebook looks like crap right? Alibaba could have rallied and t attacked the top of the range for tomorrow, but it failed intraday. Netflix right now looks like crap. Amazon, okay. Now it's uh, poor, you know, now it's uh, after earnings. It kind of fell back into the range. You know, what are we looking at? So we have to start looking at value. And uh, again, when you look at charts, beggars can't be choosers. And look what I found, right? This is the septic tank of all septic tank. And I know, I know a lot of you guys love trading Boeing, but let's be real with each other. Let's be completely honest. Boeing, it takes a Herculean effort to get this thing going. The only good thing is it took out this bottom range here, and now at least you could see it has some room to this 215, you know, 215, 220 level. Is this my number one go-to play tomorrow? No, absolutely not. Right? This is like the last of the Mohicans for, for me to trade. But again, beggars can't be choosers. And at least you can see a range here that if you do get some option flow going into tomorrow, maybe you could catch lightning in a bottle on Boeing. You know, look at NKLA. Not one of the names that I would turn around and say, I'm dying to trade tomorrow. But again, beggars can't be choosers. And at least we see a range here that got rejected two days in a row. You saw pretty good aggressive weekly $26 call buyers come in. So at least you can see here, it takes out this range, you know, you have two, three dollars worth of upside. And again, is it one of those premium setups for tomorrow? Of course not. Okay. It's not a Facebook. It's not a Tesla. It's not a Netflix, but it, it, again, it does show you that you can still find some value for the next session without kind of reinventing the wheel. So maybe a name like NKLA can wake up tomorrow. Uh, CRM, you know, had, had a really good two-day run, right, excuse me, one, it had two-day run, got out of this channel, now it's building. Maybe this thing finally clears out the channel. If you look at the 60-minute view, you kind of see it. Maybe this thing clears out this channel, has another run to the 240 area. Is it great? No, it's not great, but it, beggars can't be choosers. Uh, Goldman Sachs actually looks pretty good. Uh, if you look at Goldman, had a really, really big expansion candle yesterday. It's kind of resting. If it could just confirm this range here and money flows goes into the financial stocks, maybe you could get a move uh, back to those uh, 308 highs. Again, not, nothing crazy, but it, at least it looks pretty decent. Uh, MVIS, another name, looks pretty good. Had this really, really big run uh, coming from December, uh, put in the highs here, and now it's just kind of had a big, long distribution. Uh, maybe MVIS wakes up tomorrow and starts attacking that whole number. So there are value plays, but not in the areas that we want to see. Matter of fact, I kind of like this UAVS also uh, that's showing up on the screen here. You know, had a big, big move a couple of days ago, rejected off the 10-day moving average. If you do believe in the theory stocks go from supply to supply, well, if this supply gets con you know, confirmed, who knows? Maybe it does move uh, to the $15 area. And that's kind of how today's session uh, really reflected kind of what we're talking about right now. Because if you look at all the pivots here, you'll start seeing names that I've never heard of before, but had really, really big runs um, 
at, at some point today, and that's exactly what we, we're think, kind of thinking uh, for tomorrow as well. So this is kind of what we happened today. Uh, 881, I was watching Tesla. No dice, never came close. 421, right? Needs to build on Roku. It looks great on paper, right? Hey, great call, Dan. Great call. There's no way in hell you could have traded the stock. Okay, there, there's, there's no way. It literally went from uh, 421, no joke, to 432. It felt like it went from 431 to 421 to 432. It, it felt like it went up on 500 shares, right? Here's the 421, this whole sneaky pivot. And this whole candle of $10, it, it, I swear to God, it felt like it, was, it ran up on like 500 shares. So there was no way. It looks great on paper, right? No way in hell you could have traded this thing, at least not, uh, not properly. Uh, Amazon came nowhere close. Zoom, again, came nowhere close. Cyber came nowhere close. NVIDIA actually had a really good run. For those of you guys who did uh, catch NVIDIA, congratulations. It had a big run here. 549, 550 needs to build. Uh, NVIDIA was the only one who caught, you know, caught lightning in a bottle. Here is the 549 and had a big move right into the 547, 557 level. The only thing a little bit frustrating about NVIDIA, it had a chance to clear out this whole mega macro channel and it didn't. But again, a $7 move is a $7 move. If you did catch it, I did not. Okay, if you did catch it, uh, great job there. Uh, ATOS uh, 320 needs to build. Nothing big yet, but I still like this uh, little setup here. Uh, closed it pretty much at the highs here. You know, still has a lot of room here. There's some call buying uh, coming in on yesterday. Uh, FUV just had a monster, monster move. Congratulations for all you guys who caught uh, FUV. Uh, 27 needs to build. Here was FUV. Had a big, big move here. 27 uh, went all the way up to like 31 and change. Huge move there. Uh, Workday, I traded this thing. It did nothing. It did absolutely nothing. Um, you know, I bought it. It went up like, you know, 60 cents. It did absolutely nothing. Um, and then it kind of crapped out. And, you know, I sold it for a cup of coffee gain. Just, just it wasn't going. I mean, these beta names just really, really stalled out today, uh, which sucked. Uh, I was watching on Amazon. Maybe it could finally go green. Uh, red to green above yesterday's high. Never even came close. They sold this thing off. Uh, NVIDIA, big, big move. Here was a monster move. And here's a, my, my point kind of going into tomorrow's session. Like a name like, you know, a name like, um, uh, what is it called? The name like NKLA might not be sexy on face value for tonight. But ALUS, I had no idea what this thing was. Look what this thing did. ALUS, um, 1320, 1330 needs to build. Huge move, right? ALUS, uh, huge move. 1320, 1330 went to 15 and change. Um, I traded this thing. The funny thing is I traded this thing off the opening print. I made some money on it and I got stopped out the rest break even and, and then it just exploded. Just absolutely crazy move. But it, these are the names that are making these big moves, right? 14 on deck and then it went to 15 and change. This was definitely the move of the day. It, it, to my point, kind of going into tomorrow's session, it might not look great on surface, but CPSH experience traders only, 1185, 12 needs to build. Look what this CPSH is doing. For all you guys who are still in, congratulations. It went to 17 and change uh, after that $12 break. And oh, by the way, the stock went to 21 pre, uh, after hours. Just an absolutely sick move. If you're still in it, uh, congratulations. Uh, and I said, take some on the way up as well. Um, so the moral of the story was, was this some, and, and oh, by the way, we also traded uh, OGI, which I'm still uh, in this thing. Uh, we got long at uh, 224. Guys, this is a name you guys should, keep, especially for all you guys are trading these smaller names, uh, for all you guys are trading these pot stocks. If you look at the option flow on OGI, they were coming for uh, the February 19 $5 calls, right? We bought that dip into the rising 60 minute support at 224. Uh, I got long at 224. I made some sales in the 240s. I'm still keeping a runner. Who knows, man, if this thing could start building over 250 today's highs. Again, if you go through your uh, option flow scanner, whatever scanner you're using, you can see multiple nonstop in the morning they were coming for the february 19 expiration five dollar calls that you know that definitely piqued uh, my attention considering the stocks at two was was at 224 uh, when we got long anyway guys have a great night everybody god bless stay safe stay sane that's the only way we could kind of uh <laughs> navigate these waters and with god's help i'll see you all tomorrow take care guys